my friends, I'm extremely happy that we are allowed to open the church this weekend onwards. But I'm waiting for bishops or some guidelines for our parishes in the diocese here. So I'm just waiting that guidelines to be to be able to follow at least to a certain extent. We know certain things, distance wise, mask, face mask, and maybe latex gloves, and all these kind of you know, things, and the distance in the pews and all that we are already getting ready. But at the same time, we want to have some further guidelines what our diocese is going to say. Maybe one door to come and one door to go, keeping the distance all the time and sanitizers at the back and sanitizers here everywhere so you can make use of those things too as you enter and as you leave so nobody has to touch the door knobs and so on so i'm rejoicing in the lord let's see we will send you emails if i'm going to say the mass but only two masses saturday evening at 4 30 and sunday at 10 30 only two masses for the time being and see how distribution of communion all together come coming together to say the mass in the house of god i know we all are longing to have the eucharistic celebration and quite happy to say so we are going to open soon that is to say that this weekend or the following weekend this weekend i will let you know if i'm going to have the church open and at the same time this little bit of a journey this little bit of messages began with my friend one day he came a wonderful family man christopher randall he just said maybe we we are longing to have some desiring to have some messages that's how it came along simple and ordinary i didn't want any flashy kind of thing very professional way of doing not at all just as simple as you see me in the church and that's all i wanted to and a few meditational points and these are the meditational points born out of my meditation I'm sharing with you. And so today, I'm talking about domestic church. Now, families are the breath and lifeblood of the church, be it universal church, particular church, or parish, or a small church in the mission field. In other words, family is the cell of the church, however it is defined. The family is the domestic church. The concept of domestic church emerged 55 years ago in the Second Vatican Council. One of the documents is dedicated to the theology or ecclesiology of the church, which is called the dogmatic constitution on the church. What we, the academics, call it in Latin, Lumen Gentium. The fathers of the Sacred Council attached a variety of inspiring names to the church, such as the Pilgrim Church. As we, the baptized members, are also pilgrims belonging to the particular church and journeying towards the Kingdom of Heaven. And also, this church, universal church, is the universal sacrament of salvation because the church is the custodian of the seven sacraments instituted by Jesus Christ and then he donated the sacraments to the care of the church. It is Christ Jesus who leads us to the church and nourishes us with his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. Hence, Christ lives and works in and through the church in order to sanctify the families, the domestic church, and to help lead us, the families of life and love. So in a way, Christian family can be referred to as a school of life, faith, and love. Regarding the domestic church, the Second Vatican Council puts it this way, from the marriage of Christians, 
there comes the family in which the new citizens of the human society are born. And by the grace of the Holy Spirit in baptism, they are, these are made children of God so that the people of God may perpetuate throughout the centuries. In what might be regarded as the domestic church, the parents, by word and example, are the first heralds of the faith with regard to their children. They must foster the vocation which is proper to these, to each child, and this with special care if it be to religion. So, all are born into a family. The children's well-being is looked after by the parents who are the first teachers of faith and love for their children. The domestic church, the family, is the real, real school. All the domestic church, the family, the school of educating faith and helping all the members of the family to receive the sacraments. All these are taken place, all these take place in the family, which in itself is a small community of life, faith and love, the domestic church. It is also a living part of the larger universal church. In fact, without family, the church may not exist. Domestic church is a miniature of the universal church and has an important public role to play. That is, this domestic church, the family, has a duty to Christian witnessing in the society in which the family exists, lives, model after the holy family of Nazareth. It is the domestic church that we, the baptized families, receive grace after grace and grow in virtues and acquire supernatural life. The Christian family, the domestic church, is the real reflection of the Holy Trinity in whom we find our source of love, forgiveness, grace, and our final destiny. That's where we are reaching to the kingdom of heaven. So my friends, let us take care of our families and support them by all means, especially spiritually. Let us also deepen our sense of community of faith and love in the family, the domestic church, by worshipping Jesus Christ, our Savior, in our local churches, the parishes, by assembling together, praying together, and loving one another, and building up a solid domestic church, the family, by becoming a part and parcel of the universal church founded by Jesus Christ and guided by the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit bless all of our Christian families and all the families all over the world so that we may be found worthy in the sight of God as a good domestic church living in our societies. Thank you. God bless you. I love you and I pray for you all. We'll be soon seeing each other and I'm eager to see all my parishioners here at St. Teresa's. Thank you. Bye for now.